Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Living Life Without Limits. Something big is going to happen to you right now. You will receive everything you need to live the good life. You can be wealthy, successful, and happy. You are now entering into the wealthy place of your life. Wisdom and miracles are coming your way today. We want you to exceed every expectation and achieve your dreams. So here we go. Get ready for your life to change. Now please welcome Dr. H. Michael Chitwood. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Potential Church and Living Life Without Limits. We are very excited and happy that you're here today with us. We're here at the ICCM Radio Network of America, and we're glad that you're on board with us today. I have something today that's going to be very life-changing and very powerful to you today, and I think you're going to find out that God is going to do something spectacular for you today. I want you to listen carefully today. First of all, I'd like to ask a request of you. And that is, would you notify someone or uh, your friends, especially your friends and family, I want you to send them a notification right now because uh, some of these uh, platforms are famous for uh, <laughs> basically not notifying you that, that they're even live. So uh, send that out right now if you would. I want to give you just a moment to invite someone because I don't want to begin this program unless they're right with me from the beginning. So would you take a moment to do that while you're doing that and inviting all your friends? I would like to take a moment and give you an update on our strategic Holy Ghost encounter. Uh, I, I've never been in a conference like this before, and I know you hear that every time that we finish a conference, but this one had something very different. A most powerful conference I've ever been in, and um, it was about one subject. It didn't include other things. It was one subject and that was empowerment within itself it was all it was it was really awesome also i'd like to give you an update as you know uh, our church went to the ark uh, a few weeks ago and we just had a incredible time there while you're still inviting people i want everybody inviting and notifying your friends and invite all of your followers to join us this morning because i have something that i have to share with you that's going to change your life and their life we had a great ARC encounter at the ARC encounter. Uh, it was just absolutely off the charts. I would recommend that to everyone. And then the last thing I'd like to update you on is our Wealthy Place Church is just going great. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you in a few moments to pray about helping us with our new radio program that we're just about ready to start there in uh, Fort Lauderdale with uh, Nikki V. And we're excited about that. A lot of people are coming and, and their lives are being changed. And by the way, be sure that you catch our Wealthy Place uh, Church broadcast. We're on four times a day. So we want you to be a part of that also. And then finally, don't forget, we'll be offering the Wealthy Place Master Class, and those are going to be incredible. So we'll be getting that out to you very soon. I want to speak to you today about this word that a lot of people uh, don't seem to understand, and that is prosperity. Uh, somebody type that on the screen, prosperity. Type that word prosperity on the screen. Everybody, now you need to follow me from the beginning of this because it will be life-changing if you follow my instructions. If you don't follow my instructions, then you won't get nearly as much out of it because you're not uh, following what I'm asking you to do. I want you to type the word prosperity on your comments section. Prosperity. Everybody type the word prosperity prosperity. Thank you very much. I see you're doing that now. Uh, a lot of people ask preachers, they say, are you a prosperity preacher? Or are you a prosperity preacher? You hear that all the time. Well, uh, I'm not a prosperity preacher. I am a prosperity demonstrator. There's a difference. I demonstrate prosperity prosperity comes out of me. It's all around me. I, I can tell you testimony after testimony. If people can just hang around, if people can just be around, I can show them how that they can change their life financially. And everybody, including you, you want to do better. You want to have better things, nice things. You want to go where you want to go and do what you want to do. 
eat in nice restaurants, stay in nice hotels, and you want to do all that without loading up your credit cards. Prosperity is not having a bunch of debt in the top left-hand drawer at your, at your house. So I want to talk to you about you need to know where to go, you need to show where to go, and you need to sow where you want to go. Now, I want you to write this down on the screen, if you would, please. Uh, I see some of you have not invited anybody yet. There's 21 that's on this broadcast that I can see on my screen uh, that has not invited anybody. So if that's you, I want you to invite somebody to this broadcast. Uh, you'll be doing them a great, great benefit if you do that. Uh, write this on the screen, if you would, please. Thank you very much for 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 uh, for inviting people. But write down Revelation creates reality. Revelation creates reality. You, you know, it's amazing, John. Once you get people out of debt, you want everybody to be out of debt. Um, we had about uh, nine or ten here that was out of debt from uh, our ministry, and um, they said that they wouldn't go back no matter what. Uh, they were excited about being out of debt. So once you get people out of debt, you want everybody out of debt. Have you ever noticed that? If you could ever just taste debt freedom, being free from debt, from that bondage, from that thing around your neck, you'd never go back. You'd be a different person. I got a preacher out of debt one time, and, and his members, I went back to the church to minister. In fact, I was just in Chatsworth, Georgia. Boy, we had a powerful service down there, didn't we? I mean, that was incredible. We had a powerful service down there in a little place called Chatsworth, Georgia, uh, about an hour from here, I guess. We had a wonderful service there. People were touched and blessed and healed, and, and, um, and I taught them about biblical economics, and, and the results and the reports from there of having someone coming in that has money. See, you can't be teaching prosperity if you're not totally debt-free and if you're not totally a multimillionaire. It's one thing to be a millionaire on paper, and it's another thing to have a million dollars worth of net worth. They're two different things. So I went down to that little church in Chatsworth, Georgia, and I preached down there to them. Boy, my goodness, I guess I only had a message for 45 minutes, but they just wouldn't turn loose of this. And one thing that they all had in common is they wanted to be debt-free. They said that the debt just keeps them bound. I mean, it just keeps them bound up. But once you get somebody out of debt, you want to get everybody out of debt. And I could say this too, and I think you'd agree with it, but once you've lived in true abundance— once you've lived in true abundance, somebody put this on the screen. Once you've lived in true abundance, you want everybody to live in true abundance. That's my desire. That's my mission in life is to get everybody debt free and to get everybody living in true abundance. And true abundance is not by the things you have. True abundance is having things that you don't owe for. And there's a lot of people that strapped with debt. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's 1,700 names that's added to the list of millionaires every day. 1,700 names are added to the list of millionaires every day. Now, I want to speak to you about how that happens. Uh, see, I've learned that you have to have the power of detailing your desires. Every now and then, they, my car's in Fort Lauderdale and my car's in Alabama and my car's in Chattanooga, they get detailed. And what that means is they take from top to bottom and they clean out everything in that car. I'm talking about the cracks. I don't put food in my car and, and empty McDonald French fry packs. I'm talking about they clean everything in that car. They detail my car. Well, God wants you to detail your desires. Now, I want you to write this on the screen, on your comment section, asking God specifically. Put that up quickly, if you would, please. Asking God specifically for what you really want. It's important that you understand that God wants you to tell him the desires of your heart. 
Now, many believers are not receiving the promises of God, the true promises of God. The true promises of God, he doesn't give you something and hand you a coupon book. That's not the true promises of God. You may think it is, and you may want people to think that you're successful, but the true promises of God is God wants you to be very specific, and he wants you to ask in faith. Somebody type on the screen, asking in faith. Oh, God, I feel the anointing of God. Asking in faith. Asking in faith. Now, asking in faith is asking God specifically for what you desire. Asking God specifically for what you desire. Now, coming to God with false humility will only produce false hope. Coming to God with false humility will only produce false hope and unanswered prayers. Now, right there is the problem. Because people will get all wired up and all pumped up and all emotional about receiving prosperity in their life, but they're not sowing the right seed, and they're not sowing in faith, and they're not praying specific prayers. Let me give you an example of maybe uh, false humility, coming to God with false humility. Somebody type that on the screen. No false humility here. When you come to God, you don't pray like this, Father, I just need your presence today. I don't want anything else. I don't want any gold or silver that you promised me. I just want your presence. That's false humility. That is a general prayer. That is religion. Uh, that, or, that, that, I'll tell you what that is, John. That is the traditions of men. That's a traditional prayer. Oh, God, I don't want a thing today except I just want you to bless me. God can't respond to that prayer because God wants you to pray specifically. I'll tell you what a specific prayer is. If you'd like to hear it, and this is for somebody this morning, I believe, if you would just, if you would just open and receive this in your spirit. Here's a prayer I wrote down this morning. Father, I want to thank you for giving me a four-bedroom house, two-and-a-half baths, and a two-car garage. Thank you, Lord. That is a specific prayer. Now, God can respond to that when you sow your seed. But when you sow your seed, it's Lord, bless me today. I want your presence today. I just want you to bless my family. He can't respond to that. But he can respond to this. I don't know who that is this morning, but you may want to type that prayer right now on the screen. Father, I'm believing you, and I thank you for a four-bedroom house, two-and-a-half baths, and a two-car garage. Or whatever your specific request is, make it known to God. Now, when we go to God, we have to go boldly. You don't go disrespectfully talking to God, but you go boldly. And let me prove that to you today, found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly. Somebody type boldly on the screen. Let us therefore come what? Boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Well, when you have a desire... And when you have a need, you must be bold and have a specific prayer. Now, let me give you a quick definition. I, I typed this out this morning. A definition of the word specific. Something that is clearly defined or identified. A specific prayer is something that is defined. Boy, I like that boldly there. Who is that? That must have been Debbie. That's a nice boldly there. I like that. The word boldly should have been boldly typed because you come to the throne of grace to God boldly, specifically. Now, the second definition of specific is to be precise and clear in making statements or issuing instructions. Identify what you want. Now, I don't know if you, if you know this or not, but, 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 but it's important that you know that a seed will move God. A seed will move God. Now, it's got to be the right seed because the value of the seed that you sow is not the amount, but it's the value of what it was to you and it's what the value was that you had left. See, see, David even put an, offer, an offering on the altar and the plague was stopped. So don't tell me that a seed won't move God. David placed a seed on the offering and it stopped the plague just like that.
See, a seed doesn't know about the pandemic. Oh, God, I feel the anointing of God right now. A seed doesn't know about the pandemic. The seed doesn't know about what Wall Street's doing. The seed doesn't know what color you are or where you're from. Seed doesn't know all that. It's just a seed. And God wants you to know that you can trust Him when you come to Him with your seed if you are specific with your prayers. See, a seed doesn't know what's going on in some of these places. It doesn't care. Does it see? A, a seed of corn doesn't have to try to be a seed of corn. It's corn. So, so it's important for us to understand today that, that, that you need to be coming to God specifically. Now, I want to address two things with you, the promises of what you're asking for. And the Lord told me this morning when I was getting ready to bring this to you, this short message today, the Lord said to tell you to stop praying empty prayers. I wish I could get somebody to put that on the screen. Stop praying praying empty prayers. They're not going to get you anywhere. You're wasting your breath. Save that to the end. Stop praying empty prayers. I wish I could get somebody to put that up this morning. Stop praying these empty prayers. Now, the promises of receiving what you ask for is found throughout the Bible. Let's start with Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. It says, ask and it shall be given. Somebody type that on the screen. Ask and it will be given. It's just that simple. Number two, he said, seek and you will find. Seek and you will find. I need somebody to put these up quickly. And the third one says, knock and it shall be open. Now, most people are referring that strictly to salvation, and it is salvation. But it also is, maybe, it's, maybe it's knocking on the doors of opportunity. Maybe it's knocking on the doors of the level of success that you want to go to. See, Jesus said that if you ask, it shall be given to you. If you ask... Well, you can't just ask, bless me. What does that mean? Well, I, wanna, I want your presence. Well, you've got your presence with God everywhere you go because He's inside you, the Holy Spirit. You take the Holy Spirit with you everywhere you go. It's His presence. So, so you don't just pray these vague and these empty prayers. Jesus said that if you ask, it shall be given. Do you believe that? I believe that. I'm very specific on my prayers. That's the reason why that I normally get what I want. Because I'm specific on my prayers. And by the way, when I pray for people, I normally, if they'll tell me what they want. I had one lady come up. She said, well, I said, what do you want God to do for you today, honey? And she said, well, I just want the Lord to bless our family. I said, what does that mean? And she couldn't even think of what she wanted. I think she was just up in the prayer line just to get prayed for. Some people just have to give hands laid on them just to have hands laid on them because it's a tradition. Now, when you come to me, you come and ask specifically to your Father for what you want. See, you're asking God for something, but you're not being specific about it. You will never receive from God unless you detail what you want. Now, let, let's, look, let's look at Mark eleven twenty four. 24. <clears throat> Mark, look that up for me if you would. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. It starts off, it says, whatsoever. Put that on the screen. Whatsoever. What does whatsoever mean? Whatsoever. Somebody type that up. I need somebody to. I need somebody to help me this morning. That 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 um, that knows the word. Uh, Mark eleven twenty four. Here it is. Let me let me let me read it. Let me read it. Let me read it from from the Bible. Uh, Mark eleven twenty four. <clears throat> uh, let's put that up. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire. When you pray, did you hear that? What does that mean? Whatsoever. No, I'm going to stay there just a minute. Whatsoever. Run the teleprompter back a little bit. Whatsoever things you desire. When you pray, believe that you have them and receive them. And you will get them. Now, that last part, I just put my translation in there, which uh, doesn't mean anything except that it goes right along with the Word of God. And it says this, is that whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you have them and you shall have them. So there's not any limit. Whatsoever is a very big, huge thing when you want something from God. Whatsoever. Now, let me show you this here. You're asking God, 
and God is going to perform that based on this. Your prayers will be answered when you pray the promises of God. Well, the promises of God is not that I'll, I, I want to bless you. It, you have to be specific about that. Now, let me show you this just a minute. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will or word, he hears us. I don't know about you, but somebody should type glory on the screen for that. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, today is my son's birthday. He was born on December the 6th. And I was a good daddy up until about 10, and um, some, some people got hold of him. Um, and I love being a daddy. I was a good daddy. And when we went to the store, uh, he would ask me, he said, Daddy, I'd like to have this. I said, well, I'll, I'll, we'll come back and get it later, maybe tomorrow or the next day. So, so the next time we go back, guess what? He puts me in remembrance of what I told him, which was my word. I said, I'll, I'll get this for you the next time. I'm using this as an example. I'll get this for you the next time. And, and, and so what you have to understand is, is that, that he's putting me in remembrance of my word. You should put God in remembrance of his word. And it's not with a vague prayer. It's the, his will is his word. And when he says it, he will perform it. And it's important that you know that the secret for what you're getting ready to ask God for is all in the details. Details. Uh, be specific with God's word. Know what you want. Know how to get it. Now, Jesus said, everyone who asks receives. Somebody type, everyone, anyone. Jesus said, everyone who asks receives. Receives. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 8, for everyone that seeketh receives. Everyone that asks receives. Everyone that knocks, the door shall be open. When you aren't receiving, there's something wrong because you're an everyone. He said everyone. For everyone, in, verse, uh, uh, in chapter 7, verse 8, For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Everyone. Somebody type everyone on the screen. Type it uh, like Debbie's doing. I like what she types. That's the reason I was drawn to her back when she was in California years ago. Uh, she was a fast typer. She's got fast fingers. Some of y'all need to speed up your typing. Speed up your typing a little bit. Now, <clears throat> if you ask in faith, and you ask specifically for what you want, and you pray God's Word, then you shall receive it. There's not any question. Now, let me give you an example of two prayers. Now, these are prayers that God will heal, he, hear. In fact, he heard this down in Chatsworth. I prayed for a lady that she only had uh, five or six months to live, she said, uh, because she was eat up, and we prayed for her, and she went to the doctor uh, at her regular time. And, and Pastor called me the other day and told me, he said, you know what? He said, I think her name was Ethel or something. I, I, you remember her name? You remember her name, Roma? I, we don't remember her name, but... but, but uh, she, we, we prayed this prayer. Now, Father, I thank you that your word declares in 1 Peter 2, 24. That's what I prayed. That by the stripes of Jesus, Ethel, you, I, are healed. So I ask now in the name of Jesus that you touch and heal my body. Now, in Jesus' name, be healed. I told him I wanted to be, I wanted to be healed. Now, a prosperity prayer would be, Father, I thank you that your word says in Job chapter 36, 11, that if I obey and serve you, I shall spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. I ask that you send prosperity and blessings to my family now. So, 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 so prosperity, being specifically, will come to you. You have to be specific about what you're praying. Send finances, finances. That's specific. Send finances. Now, in this prayer, I added how much. I told this one man when I prayed for him, he needed $110,000 or his business was going to close. And I said, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, 
we are quoting your word and believe in standing on your word in Job 36, 11. It says that $110,000 is going to come into John's bank account. It's going to come now. Send prosperity now. And that's what he did. God will send you specifically what you're asking for. Now listen, it's not God's fault. If you don't get what you want, it's your fault. And listen, God knows exactly what you, what you need. God knows exactly what you need. He, he, is, he, is not, he, is not, he knows everything, and He is not sitting by waiting for you to pray a prayer that's going to be empty and pray a prayer that's not going to have what it takes to get what you need. That's not the God that we serve. Now, it's not just about prosperity, but I believe in prosperity. But I don't believe it just in the checkbook. I believe you can have prosperity in your health. I believe that you can have prosperity in your family if you want it. I believe that you can have prosperity in your business. You can have prosperity in your church. But you have to pray the prayer, and then you have to do what God has called you to do. You can't just keep doing the same thing over and over. And, and, and let me say this. It, it's important that you understand today that, uh, uh, see, see, you have ec economics, which is the natural, and then you have seedology. See, I, I, believe that you, I believe that you need to know today that, um, I think you need to know today that deception is a decision. Does somebody type that on the screen? Deception is a decision. So, so you, have, you have economics, which is the natural, and then you have seedology, which is the supernatural. Uh, economics is unpredictable. Economics is unpredictable. Bank of America promised to lend $4.5 million to a friend of mine uh, just outside uh, Pinbrook Pines, great man, he had all the paperwork in. It's four and a half million dollar loan because he was purchasing some property. Someone was wanting to sell some property in Pinbook Pines, Florida, about an hour, about forty five minutes from Fort Lauderdale. It's real close, and the bank gave a commitment letter that he was they were going to loan four and a half million dollars. Gave the terms, signed off on it, and, and everything was fine. Well, later on, something popped up on his credit report that wasn't even his. And the bank put that on hold. See, economics in the world is unpredictable. But when you're involved with seedology, seedology, somebody type that on the screen, seedology, it's a study of seed. I can tell you that in the supernatural, that everything is predictable. In the natural, things are unpredictable. But in the supernatural, Everything is predictable. That's the reason why that deception is a decision. It's a decision for you to be deceived, and it's not good for you to be deceived because that's not God's will. That's why that we pray about everything. I pray about everything. I mean, even to the least little thing, I pray about it. I don't pray long, but I pray, and God speaks to me. I've had deals before that I prayed about. Look, you're putting that seedology up there, S-E-E-D-O-L-O-G, seedology. You need to teach your people about seed because seed is supernatural. You can't stop seed. I've got seed out here in my parking lot, and I've killed that stuff and killed that stuff over and over. In fact, Rome has killed a lot of that stuff. We've, had, we've hired people to kill it. You can't kill it. it somebody had some seed that was on this ground before that pavement was poured. And we have grass popping up everywhere, and we have to just maintain it because our place is perfect. Our, our, our place is to the maculate level. But we still have seed coming up through the pavement. Oh, my God, I don't know if anybody's hearing this this morning or not. But you can't stop seed. Your, your seed, <laughs> dirt can't stop your seed. Nothing can stop your seed once you get it in the ground. Now, that's the problem. Most people don't understand the difference between economics in the natural and seedology in the supernatural. <laughs> when, you, when you start getting seed in the ground, I don't care what it is. I mean, it's going to keep popping up and popping up if you don't dig it up. Now, we can't dig this seed up under the pavement because we've got pavement on it, but the seed still comes up. The grass still comes up. 
weeds still come up. And so you don't want weeds to choke your seed. You don't want weeds to choke your seed. I was talking to Debbie two or three weeks ago, and she said, you should do a message on weeds, and next week I'm doing it. Weeds will kill your seed. Weeds. So it's important for you to realize when you pray that you pray specific prayers. It's important that you realize that, that you don't want to operate in the natural. You want to operate in the supernatural. Now, we live in this world, but we're not of this world. I can assure you of that. So, so what you do with the harvest, once you receive it, once you sow your seed and plant your seed, once you plant your seed, somebody put on there, plant my seed. Make it personal. When you plant your seed, when you plant your seed, and when you receive your harvest, then what you do with the harvest is up to you. Now, you'll be judged on that of how you handled God's money. If all your harvest is going into interest payments and finance charges on your credit cards, you're being a very bad steward, then you're going to be capped at a 30 or 60 level. Did everybody understand? Let me give you an example. Do you know that Noah, when that boat landed, when the ship landed, the ark, was that what it was called, an ark? When, it, when the ark landed uh, and, 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 and uh, all the water uh, was gone, uh, Noah planted some seed because he wanted some grapes. Is that true? And so when he planted the grapes, he decided he wanted some wine. And he got drunk. That's true, isn't it? Noah got drunk. Did you know that? He got drunk. Now, what he did with his harvest was up, to, was up to Noah. He used his to get drunk. It's okay if he wants to get drunk. He used his harvest to get drunk. Some of you are using your harvest for things that God's not pleased with. That's the reason why you're capped at a 30-fold return. But this week, we prayed here, and God gave me a word for the, for the church, and that is that we are moving out of all of these 30- and 60-fold returns in fact, if you look in the Bible, you'll see that there was one place where God put the hundredfold first before the 60 and the 30. So it's important for you to understand today that what you do with the harvest is up to you. Not up to God. It's up to you. What do you do with the harvest? Now, it's important that you know today that, that, that a seed will change your whole life if you put it in good ground. Don't put it in a broke person. Don't put it in somebody who's got a bunch of debt. They're just using your seed to pay on their interest payments. And that's not pleasing to God. I don't care what anybody tells you. It's not pleasing to God to take your harvest and pay interest payments and large pay interest payments. If you're paying anything above 2%, you're paying way too much and you're wasting God's money especially on credit cards. And I taught that for 13 years on Pat Robinson called Master Your Money and Master Your Finances and Building and Accumulating Wealth, all three same titles. But I taught that for 13 years on the CBN network. So it's important that you understand today that God wants to do something miraculous in your life, but you have to do two things. Learn to pray specific prayer. Don't have to be long to say, God, I want a brand new Cadillac Black with white interior, black with black interior, and, and, and I want it to be uh, pre-owned or new, uh, whatever you choose. Pray a specific prayer. And when you pray a specific prayer, he said that when you ask, you shall receive. So why would he put that in there if it was just about health or just about salvation? He put it in there about everything in life. In fact, Jesus did most of his work in the marketplace, not the synagogue. So today, what I believe in God for, and, and I wrote this down today, early this morning, uh, up very early, I want to declare that your last day of not having what God promised you is over. Somebody, can, can, is, that, is that too much to put on the screen? I want you to make it I declare that this is my last day of not having what God promised me. Where's the promises at? It's in his book. It's in this book. This is where it's at. 
Every promise that God has for you is in this book. He didn't promise you debt. He didn't promise you finance charges and interest. He, he didn't promise you a bad life. He didn't promise you a bad marriage. He didn't promise you sickness. He, he didn't promise you bad family relations. He didn't promise you any of that stuff. He only promised you good things. So when you pray, you have to pray specific prayers. So I want us to declare this this morning. I declare, I think somebody's got it up there. I declare that this is my last day that I don't have what God has promised me. This is my last day. This is my last day of not having what God has promised me. Now that's a declaration over your life. That's a declaration. I declare, I'm making a declaration. I declare that this is my last day of not having what God has promised me. Now, the desires of your heart, when you pray, you pray the word. You pray a specific prayer. Father, I want my son, put his name in there, to get off drugs and come home to daddy. That's the prayer you would pray and call his name. Be specific. I want hit my son, so-and-so, which I'm John Roberts, to get off of drugs and come home to daddy. That's a very specific prayer, wouldn't you say? That's a specific prayer. He say, oh, God, I pray that you'll, I pray that you'll, I'll keep your hand upon my son. Now, that's a specific prayer, too. But, but I, uh, you, if you want somebody to come home, you put his name in there and you pray a specific prayer. The same thing if you need something or if you desire something. What is it you desire? Because God wants to give it to you. Listen, God didn't put you here to punish you. He didn't put you here to punish you. Why did he make you? He put you here and created you to be on this earth so that you could fulfill his work and multiply and make disciples. And so many times we get caught up with our things that we're really not making disciples. Well, I made one last year, and that's not enough. We need disciples. So, so today I want you to just remember that here in the book of Mark, it says, Therefore, I say unto you, I say unto you that's watching me today, what things... And that's plural. What things soever you desire. What things soever you desire. Type that on the screen. What things I desire. What things I desire. We have one of our ICCM members that she's been trying to sell her house. And she had it sold. But she had a little problem with the basement because uh, water was coming in and it was a little bit of mildew. So they turned it down. Well, we're praying that God is going to send a buyer to buy her house for this amount of money. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them it could just be a receive it, but this is several, so receive them, and you shall have them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, either you believe that or you don't. If you don't believe that, then you're never going to be successful in your prayers. And the Lord told me, and I wrote it down this morning early, stop praying empty prayers. They're not going anywhere. Every morning when I wake up, I say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Then I go sow my seed. That shows my heart. In Ecclesiastes 11, um, where is that, 11, 6? 11, 6, I believe it is. It says, sow your seed in the morning and withhold not your hand in the evening, for you don't know which one's going to come back to you. Now, I never really understood that revelation like that until Dr. Martin came. And taught us about that. Did you understand it like that? Did you ever see it that way? We never saw it that way here. But it says, sow your seed in the morning 
and withhold not your hand in the evening. Look it up. Look that up for me real quick. Let me read that. Ecclesiastes 11.6. Now you say, well, is this about an offering? It's going to be. Because I have a DVD that I'd like to give you if you saw a significant seed. I had a man to play this in his church for his church service. And he said his people got totally set free from debt and totally set free from, from restrictions of giving and so forth. I mean, it was, just, it was just incredible. Now, here's what the Bible says about Ecclesiastes 11.6. In the morning sow thy seed. This is the Word of God I'm reading from. This is not, this is not one of Dr. Chitwood's books. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand. This is what Martin, Dr. Martin taught us. It's been in the Bible for years. He didn't write this. He just got revelation knowledge of it. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Now that's the Bible. If it tells you to sow your seed in the morning, and, and by the way, at the top of this verse, this chapter says, Cast thy bread upon the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. So sowing is in the Bible. Now, I want you to start making your prayers specific, whatever it is. If you need your children saved, then you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll bring Billy and uh, Sandy to know you as their personal Savior. Let them hear the word. Let them get in church. Let them, whatever it may be. But you want them saved. Pray a specific prayer. If, you, if your mother needs to be healed, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are Jehovah Rapha right now. I declare that my mother, so-and-so, is healed of cancer. Dried up now in Jesus' name. Now, if two or three agree on that prayer, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. There's no question about it. I've seen it before. I've seen people healed. I've seen people blessed financially because we pray a specific prayer. Now, I want you today to sow a significant seed in this ministry, and this seed is going to go into your future. Not going to go to your past, but it's going to go into your future. By the way, we had a lady that was, uh, has money owed to her. I think it's over a million dollars, uh, somewhere in that category. I'm not sure if that's the right amount, but it's, it's, it's way up there. And we prayed for her uh, a few weeks ago. And do you not know that that man called her? And she told him, she said, well, you have to call him a lawyer, which is the proper thing to do because the lawyer's involved. And do you know that they told the lawyer that they wanted to work payments out on that and try to get that thing paid off within a few years? Whereas she'd had no contact before, none. She wouldn't even return phone calls. But we prayed and we, we put her name in there. The Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that so-and-so will pay this money back that's owed to this lady right here. We prayed that prayer. Guess what happened? She called her. She said, you need to call the lawyer. She called the lawyer, and the lawyer said, well, what do you want to do? We want to work out payments if you'll drop the lawsuit. We want to work out payments. We didn't want to go through a big, long lawsuit with that stuff. So pray a specific prayer, and you'll find out that God will answer it, whatever it is. Now, I want you to sow a seed this morning of significance. Sow a bountiful seed. Don't sow some weak seed like people just do over and over, the same seed over and over and over. Sow a significant seed. Significant seed. Will you do that today? And when you do that, I want you to attach your prayer. Now, you can't buy miracles, you can't buy healing, you can't buy that stuff, but you can sow a seed and believe God that he's going to return to you a bountiful harvest. He says if you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Now I'm going to tell you what I would never do in a million years. 
I would never reduce my sowing down from previous years. Never. I would never reduce my sowing down from previous years or my investments that I've made. I want to keep my sowing and my investments into the kingdom of God growing every year more and more and more. And he says that he will increase you in book of Psalms more and more, you and your children. Now, you can sow your seed by going to iccmworldwide.org. That's our parent organization. Up under that is Celebration Church, uh, 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 IPAW, Save America's Churches, Potential Church. So that's why we have you go to iccmworldwide.org. Now, I have this incredible DVD that I want to send you if it's a significant seed. And when I look at it, I will determine if it's a significant seed. We had one man, he sent in a dollar and wanted one of our books. We said, if you just sow a significant seed, well, he's not being honest. So we didn't send him anything. In fact, I think we even credited his credit card for a dollar. It was ridiculous. So if I see that you sow a significant seed, and God will speak to me about that when the list comes to me, then I want to send you this DVD. And I'll tell you right now, this one man played this for his church service, changed his church. So I want you to sow a significant seed. Pay your tithes, sow a significant seed today, and don't forget about our ministries. I, Paul, for our young ministers of the gospel and Save America's Churches and all the things that we're doing, and we're doing a lot. We're getting ready to get involved with, with several different projects here at ICCM that's going to really bless a lot of our... We have our new university that's going to be starting pretty soon. It's going to be great. You're, you're going to love it because we're going to be teaching the things that you need to know about to have a better life. And we've got some great speakers. They're going to be coming in here and taping right here. They're going to be filming it right here. So we're excited about that, and we want you to be a part of that. So understand that I am prosperity demonstrated. And it's pure prosperity, not demonstrated with a bunch of bills in my left-hand drawer. I'm Prosperity, somebody type that on the screen. Say it. Dr. Chitwood is prosperity demonstrated. A lot of people can act, I got to go. A lot of people act like they've got prosperity. Dr. Martin calls it dressed up poverty. That's really what it is. Just because you've got five or six houses, I've got three. Just because you've got five or six houses, that doesn't mean that you're prosperous. You've got a coupon book full of, a drawer full of coupon books. I want you to sow a seed today. I want you to sow where you want to go. So where you want to go. Somebody put that on the screen. So where you want to go. Now you can go to iccmworldwide.org. And that's the best way to do it. Just go to iccmworldwide.org. Now I didn't say pure prosperity. That's not what I said. What, what I said is prosperity demonstrated. Prosperity demonstrated is the title of that. Prosperity demonstrated. Don't be dressed up poverty. See, some of you go out and borrow money to dress up so you can impress somebody that's broker than you. Revelation creates reality. Are you hearing that this morning? Revelation. Revelation creates reality. I tell you, once you're out of debt, man, I, there it is right there, www.iccmworldwide.org. Nice and big, and all you have to do is just record that. I want you to sow a significant seed today. When they bring it to my desk tomorrow morning, I'm not only going to pray. I pray over that, by the way, every week. I'm going to pray over it, but then I'm going to also send you, if you have a significant seed, then I'm going to send you this DVD that will change your life. I just want you to watch it. Now, that's a condition there. If you will watch it, I'm not going to send it to you if you're not going to watch it. If you promise me that you'll watch it. How many of you promise me that you'll watch it? If you'll watch it, then I'm going to send it to you. There's not any question about that. I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to get it right to you. All right, well, God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We appreciate and love you very much. I hope that you appreciate this message from the Lord today, and that is when you pray, pray a specific prayer. Whatsoever things you desire. Bigger house, bigger car, better relationships with your family, health, whatever it is, whatsoever things 
you desire. Well, thank you for being with us today. We love you. And thank you all of you that's in here today. We have a lot of people in from Alabama today. And they're right here live with us. And um, Pastor Denise Tobert's church from Alabama's here. And New Jersey's here. And we got a lot of people today that's going to be in the service. If you're here in the area at Celebration Church, uh, we're at 6425 Lee Highway, right at the foot of that big old cross. And we sure would love to see you here today in service. Praise and worship, by the way, begins at 10 a.m. And we're excited about that. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. May God bless you and keep you. May God smile on you and gift you today in a very big way. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper on today. God will confirm all of this by blessing you today. And remember this, the worst is over and the best is yet to come. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week. Be sure that you let them know about your significant seed so they can bring it to my desk and then I'm going to send you this DVD and make sure that you make sure that we get those DVDs out to everybody that sows a significant seed when they bring it to my desk. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We sure love you. We appreciate you very much. Thank you for being a part of Potential Church and living life without limits. That's why the worst is over and the best is yet to come. God bless you, and I'll see you next week at this same time.